Welcome to the hot seat. I am Meg Muir. So what's going on in the world of women in trucking? We're about to find out. In the hot seat today, we have Ellen Voya. She's the founder of the Women in Trucking Association. Ellen, welcome to the hot seat. Thanks so much, Meg. I look forward to this. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to the conversation too. Uh, whenever our team was doing some research on women in trucking and your background, uh, it's quite impressive. Uh, internationally recognized speaker and authority on gender diversity and inclusion for women. Uh, you have been invited to speak to audiences all around the globe, uh, Sweden, Australia, New Zealand, Vietnam, France, Mexico, Canada. Uh, and of course, you're uh, a very popular speaker here, coast to coast in the United States as well. Uh, and you've also been picked up by some pretty major news outlets too, Fox News and Fox Business. Uh, it's really impressive to see Bloomberg, uh, Voice of America. Uh, it's an impressive background. So we're, we're excited to have you today. Um, for those in the audience that might not know about women in trucking and your background and how it came to be, uh, could you kick us off by sharing more? Sure. I'll give you the short version. <laughs> sure. But, um, I actually, uh, in high school, I wanted to go to school for broadcast journalism. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of women who work in supply chain didn't initially say, I want to work in supply chain. And I was one of those. But I was working at a steel fabricating plant um, and I was drafting, I was drawing, designing material handling equipment, which, I mean, we're talking pallets and cantilever racks. I mean, it's nothing very, um, you know, dramatic. But they came to me and they said, uh, would you like to move into the traffic department and we'll send you to school for traffic and transportation management? So that's how I got my start. And that was 1979. Um, I completed that diploma in 1980. Um, and I worked for them for a number of years, and then I did consulting for 18 years when I started my family. So, um, wow. I, and during that time, um, so I kept trucks and carriers legal, uh, you know, registration, fuel taxes, you know, uh, things like that. Um, but during that time, I also completed my bachelor's and then my master's in communication at the University of Wisconsin. And I did my master's thesis on the complex identities of women married to professional drivers. Um, and oh, so I think that's kind of launched my career in the industry as kind of being, or not kind of, but being someone knowledgeable about the family dynamics uh, sure. of the industry. So that's, you know, that kind of launched that. Um, I worked for a small uh, nonprofit called Trucker Buddy International. It's a pen pal organization for six years. Oh. And then and then I was recruited by uh, a large carrier in the Midwest as a uh, manager of recruiting retention programs. And it was there that I realized um, that women weren't very well represented in the industry, especially as drivers. And the industry really wasn't doing a lot to bring women into the industry. Um, and so that's when I founded Women in Trucking. That's amazing. Yeah, such a cool background and story and uh, start to finish. Uh, what you've grown it to be is also absolutely incredible. Uh, can you talk to us more about the organization and uh, how it came to be what it is today? Sure. I started the association as a, a, a trade, you know, a trade professional organization. So it's what we call 501c6, um, which means that it's uh, supported by dues. And so it's a membership organization. And the first yeah. year, our goal, uh, I put together a board of directors and had all the legal paperwork done. And the first year, our goal was to hit 500 members, which we did. Um, and so, and the momentum has never slowed down. I mean, it, we've grown year over year and we're currently at about 8,000 members in 10 countries. And what is most fascinating is that our mission has never changed. It's to encourage the employment of women in the industry to address obstacles and then to celebrate success, which means telling their stories and, and highlighting pioneers. Um, sure. but Meg, you, you should be interested in knowing that um, not only do we have women who are members, but about 15% of our members are men who join because they support our mission. So even though it's women in trucking, it's not necessarily uh, for women as much as it's about women. Yeah, I think that that's really neat that you do have diversity within the group with a shared common mission um, and, and men that are engaged in that organization. I think that's wonderful. Um, so the industry, I've been in it for 12 years. Uh, my background's also in trucking, and I've seen a lot of changes over that short period of time. Uh, really curious from your point of view, what changes have you seen in this space since forming women in trucking? The biggest change I've seen since 2007 is that carriers are recognizing what women bring to the industry. 
um, in early days, they were just like, oh, wow, we can have another driver. We don't care about their age, their gender, their ethnicity. We just need another driver. And I didn't have data. Uh, nobody really separated their data by gender. Uh, but I mean, I could extrapolate from the more the automobile industry, but that was difficult to transfer to commercial drivers. Now I have data, lots of data, and I can say that female commercial drivers are safer, better with equipment, better with um, you know customers, better with paperwork. Um, women in the C level and in the director positions and boards are risk averse, um, mm -hmm. which means, and they make decisions differently than men, which means maybe considering more options, things like that. So what women bring to the industry um, is net profits. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's so interesting, right? Because there's so many avenues within the supply chain um, arena for women to play in transportation and, and supply chain uh, that a lot of folks don't know about or consider when you just think about trucking at large, right? But there's so many other avenues, be it sales and marketing or HR or IT infrastructure. I mean, these are huge segments within most trucking organizations and opportunities for women, uh, even if they don't study supply chain management. That that wasn't even an option when I was going through college, right? And now you can get an undergrad, a master's degree, a doctorate in different versions of supply chain management. So uh, I think that that's been a big change that I've seen over my my short stint too. So which is exciting. It's it's really exciting. Um, so the organization today, it's uh, you said about eight thousand members. So it's grown significantly over over your time. Um, what what would you say are the top highlights or successes from your point of view that the organization has had over the years? Well, the, the first one, um, I would say being recognized by the White House um, for being a transportation innovator, tra champion of change. And I got to take my board to the White House. So I think that helped us get credibility. That was in 2012. Um, right. But also the addition of some huge names in the industry on the board. I mean, when you see Daimler and Great Dane and, you know, Packard and, you know, yeah. FedEx and UPS and JB Hunt and Walmart, you know, on the board of directors and they're high level executives who really have a passion for creating a more gender diverse workforce in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. And the fact that they're not all trucking companies means everyone in this industry is looking for more gender diversity. So it's not just for drivers, it's for all of us. Wonderful. That's great. And you host a pretty large annual event. Is that right? That's yeah. right. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? That is amazing. Um, last year we had 1,750 or so uh, registered attendees, which is up from 800 the year before. Uh, so th that means that we're doing something right. And where can you go to a trucking event that's 85% women? Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know that those exist, right? Outside of what you, you've created. So but also, yeah, that's neat. at the event, um, every presentation, every subject, every breakout, it's for men and women. It's everything from communication skills to fraud detection or branding yourself or things like that. So it's applicable to anyone. And what I really find fascinating is that um, companies are sending a lot of people. Last year, Amazon won the participation award by sending 74 people. So first wow. of all, the fact that they're sending 74 people means that they see the value in not only networking, but in learning um, and having fun. But you know, you don't send that number of people to every conference in the trucking industry. So that tells me that they're seeing the value in the educational opportunities. Great. Yeah. We're, we're excited to attend that coming up. Um, so your plans for the future. Uh, very curious. I mean, this is your baby. You've built it uh, ground up. Uh, you've you've nurtured it and it's grown to what it is today with your leadership. Um, can you talk to us about the future and what the future holds for you and, and really where you're going to focus your energy next? Well, I'll tell you per uh, personally, um, sure. my daughter is expecting baby number three. Um, oh, congratulations. Any day, now, any day now. So I'm on call. My suitcase is packed. Um, <laughs> I have to go in the middle of the night because um, I will have uh, the older one and the middle one um, with me um, sure. when she goes and um, has the baby. So uh, that personally, that was a commitment that I made to my daughter that, you know, July is all hers. I'm ready to go. Um, and also personally, um, I, I don't know if you know this, but I have an airplane. And so I plan on um, flying my airplane and spending more time in the air. Um, but professionally, 
a number of things. Uh, even though I am no longer the CEO um, of the Women in Trucking Association, I'm still the founder. So I will still be representing the organization at presentations, speaking events, media events, um, and things like that. So we've, um, we've made that agreement with Women in Trucking that I'll still be representing the organization. And also, um, I am looking forward to possibly using, or potentially keeping my 44 years of expertise in the trucking industry, especially focused on gender diversity, um, and work with some um, for-profit companies and serve uh, on a board of directors um, or in some capacity to help them um, understand the industry better. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, I mean, what an amazing talent that will be available to have supporting a, a new board of directors. I think that's going to be a wonderful opportunity for you, Ellen. Uh, I think many people will be very lucky to have you on their board. Um, so uh, we usually end with a few questions that are off the cusp here. Um, so something that the audience might not know about you personally and or women in trucking, uh, what, what would that be, Ellen? Well, I guess about me personally, I just told you that I fly an airplane. But, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a real quick, funny story, actually. It happened that I got my commercial driver's license, my CDL, um, in December. The year I turned 50, um, I got my CDL. I had also just passed my FAA check ride. So I had my pilot's license and my commercial driver's license, um, my CDL. Um, and then I thought, well, I might as well get a motorcycle license. And so um, that same year, when I turned 50, I got the CDL, the pilot's license, the motorcycle license. And then a friend invited me to go skydiving. Um, and so I thought, oh, what the heck? So um, I took my first jump on Mother's Day. Um, and my oh, daughter goodness. my daughter came to me and she goes, mom, are you dying? <laughs> she well, thought, yeah, I just I I was crossing things off my bucket list. And I said, oh, no, I'm, I'm living. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Uh, and so many new toys to tinker with uh, throughout that period. That's that's wonderful. So, um, well, good. Well, uh, that'll do it for us today. Thank you, Ellen, so much for being on the hot seat. Until next time.